double check. I'm in the gym, I'm working. One, two, one, two. Doing what I do in the gym, training, and I get this phone call. And it's Anthony Burkowski. He's the, uh, the head of USA Boxing. He says, well, yeah, um, what I need, I just called you because I wanted to know if you were still interested in um, being on the uh, coaching staff for the Olympics. And I'm like, are you kidding me? Are you, did you call me just to joke me? And he's like, no, no, I'm, I'm, I'm serious. I'm like, Anthony, 34 years of coaching says yes. And with that, City of Norfolk boxing director and coach Gloria Peake got ready for the 2012 Summer Olympics. One, two, one, two. Believe it or not, USA Boxing is no stranger to the Burrard Park boxing facility, with former Olympic head coach Dan Campbell also coming out of this exact same gym. That's just unheard of. You've had two Olympic coaches come out of this very single gym. Most gyms don't get any. Most cities don't get any. Norfolk's had two, and both out of the same gym. That's phenomenal. What was the Olympic experience like for Peak? Let's start with the opening ceremony. And here they come. Over 80,000 people in the stadium. And then you've got media from all over the world. So all you can see is flashes going off and, you know, and as they call the different countries and you march through, it's just like, you just get this lump in your throat. I mean, it was a dream come true. I've been watching the Olympics forever ever since I was a kid. And I would watch the people come through and just think how great that was and everything. But to actually be there, I, would, I just kept looking around and I'm like, oh, my mouth is hanging down like, I, wow, I, I'm here, I'm here, I can't believe it. As an assistant coach to the 12 boxers on both the men's and women's boxing teams, Peak stayed pretty busy. I'm up at five o'clock in the morning because you have to wake people up. Uh, and you work straight through until 12 or 1 o'clock in the morning before you lay down. So it's, a, it's long, long days. It's a lot of work. I'm not there sightseeing. She didn't see many sights, but she did see a few other sports. It's like I got to see water polo. I got to see wrestling. Um, I got to see uh, volleyball. Now, I wanted to see basketball, but getting a ticket for the men's basketball, yeah. But, but I, I got to see LeBron and them in the dining hall and stuff. And I'd be passing them by, yo, LeBron, how you doing? Yeah, hey, Michael Phelps, what's up? And while it was nice to rub elbows with well-known U.S. Olympians, she would be well-known forever. The first day that the men started, which is the 28th, and I stepped out uh, onto the ring, I made history. First woman to ever coach men on the Olympic level the only woman in the world that coaches men on the elite Olympic level. So I, I made history just in that respect. Uh, and then obviously went on to also make history with the women and the women being included for the first time ever. Which included coaching Marlena Esparza to a bronze medal and Clarissa Shields to a gold medal. When that flag goes up and they play that anthem, I don't care who you are, how big, male, hard, I'm telling you, tears come to your eyes. It's a feeling like the hair stands up on the back of your neck and you just, you can't help it. You just, you cry. I mean, it's just, it's an unbelievable feeling to have the national anthem being played and, and the American flag uh, being raised and you know that you, that athlete is the best in the world. You hook off that. Come back with the two. You met people from not only every nationality, every color, but every religion that, that could possibly be on the planet. There were countries there that I didn't even know existed. I didn't know they existed. Names, I was like, what? Is that a country? They're like, yeah. I'm like, you know, it's just, it, it, it's just amazing. And I'm like, where else can you go? and really embrace the entire world in one place. Roll it. Not a good roll, roll it. The following week, she was already back coaching boxing in Barad Park, preparing for the 2016 Summer Olympics, but not necessarily for her. I want one or two of my boxers from my club 
to experience being an Olympian. You've gotten a little stronger. <laughs> there is nothing in the world like it. You can't touch it with any other sport. That's something that, that will be with them the rest of their life and will do more for them. So now I'm, I'm on a mission. My mission is to, is to get uh, one or more of my boxers on the Olympic team. And, and that's my determination. And I, I don't give up easy, so I plan to do that. There you go. For Norfolk News Now, I'm John Lincoln.